Yes, it's Monday. And you know what that means, don't you? Yes, we're going to talk about ghosts. But firstly, as is the podcaster's mantra, how are you all doing? I'll pause for a response. Very good, very good. I hope you're grabbing life by the horns and shaking it about and saying, I will have an extra croissant, sir. And if you're not doing that, then fair play, you're sane. So what do we have in store for you today? Well, of course, we have all of your paranormal stories that you very kindly sent in. And we've had a few people on social media reach out and say, where'd you send your stories to? It's a good point, because I realised I didn't mention it last week or the week before. What are you doing, Kev? It's meant to be a ghost show. So send your stories in, please, to contact at talkaboutghosts.com. And I, me, Kev, I'll read it out, because that's how the show works. So, we have a paranormal review coming up, then we're going to have your scary stories that you've sent in, your true paranormal experiences, and then we're going to take a visit over to Becca's Haunted Reddit Corner, where me and Becca talk about ghost stories we've found in the last 24 hours on Reddit. And we have a little update about the neighbour's cat today as well, because she's been to see the doctor. It's all good, don't worry about it but she's been very brave, let me put it that way. But before we do all of that, of course, we need to say a big thank you to our newest Patreons. All of our Patreons are spectacular, for they allow the show to keep going. And when you sign up to Patreon, you get two extra shows each and every week. Two! But that's eight a month. I know, I do maths too. So one is a midweek one, where I do a ramble about things in my brain. And one is on a Sunday, where me and usually Becca nowadays uh, discuss paranormal things. And I get her sceptical point of view and try and correct her about her wrong point of view. He says with a winky face. So yeah, why don't you head over to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. And not only do you get all that, with over 200, 100, 100 back episodes for you to listen to, you also get me singing your name as a thank you on this show. The guitar is well and truly out. And for those of you with a delectable ear, it's capoed. Yes, it is. Must have done it last time. Anyway, we'll leave it there. We have four wonderful new Patreons today. We have Victoria Bush, Greg Whiting, Hannah Ord and Tyler Manning. This is for you. Ooh. Ooh. It's definitely not Stairway to Heaven. No. Victoria Bush Greg Whiting too You have signed up To Patron Yeah There's Hannah Order, Tyler Manning too And I want to say Oh thank you Thank you Thank you Tell you what, messing with me falsettos there. I ended it on a seventh, of course, because that's how we do things around here. But thank you, guys. Don't forget, if you want to get 200, 100, 100 extra shows, head over to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. Right, shall I do a paranormal review so you don't have to? Doesn't make sense. Let's do it. Yes, it's time for a paranormal review. I've already said the stupid line, that doesn't make sense, so I'm not going to say it anymore. But um, I've been trying to keep a positive slant on these reviews of late, and I'm going to continue that today. I'm sure there will come one where I'm going to be like, don't waste your time, guys, it's not worth it, it's a load of crap. But not today. Today, I've been meaning to do this one for a while, actually, because it's very rare that you get something in written form which is free to consume. For example, I mean, I love 14 times. I've reviewed 14 times. It's fantastic. And, uh, but it's four pounds. I think it's 425 a month as it stands. It might even have gone up. I get my subscription. So, um, oh, look at me, but yeah, no, I do. So I'm not too sure what it is priced at, at the minute. And it's too far away over in the corner of this room for me to go and check. But my point is, is that for printed media or written media, typed media, if you will. It's not like podcasts where they're all generally free unless you decide to support someone. So it's rare that you get a written format, which is free. Now, this has popped up on timelines and I've started reading it ever since Brennan uh, and the Ghost Story guys, um, Paul, was over on it. Um, It's called Paranormality Magazine. And then I seen Jim Harold was on it. I thought, is this like a paranormal magazine that's slanted towards podcasts? And you know what? It is a bit. Like, it has a paranormality podcast chart and all stuff like that, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. We've never been in it, 
don't want to be either. Keep your stupid chart. I joke, of course. But um, yeah, the good thing about this magazine is the interview paranormal podcasters. This isn't me angling for a, a thing, by the way. Um, but they also have some really good articles in there too. And it's completely free uh, is the main point of it. Do you know what I mean? So if you stood there thinking, I wish I could read something paranormal. I just don't have A, a news agent, or B, the funds. Then you can go online and you can read this magazine completely for free, gratis, if you will, if you speak that language. So yeah, I suggest you check it out, and you can do so by heading over to paranormalitymag.com, and there you can read a digital version of the magazine. And it's fantastic. This week is... Um, oh, a magpie just flew down onto the one for sorrow. Hello, Mr. Magpie. Salute, salute. Jesus, how's your wife, Jacob? Well, thank you, Mr. Magpie, for making me look like an absolute moron on this section. Um, if you're wondering why I say all those things, it's because every time someone says, oh, when you see a magpie, you should do this, I add it as opposed to just replacing. So that's why I end up doing salutes and waving and two fingers and saying that big long list. Uh, but it does sound like I'm saying, um, Jesus, how's your wife, Jacob? So do put commas in there because, you know, religious people will get upset. Anyway, back to paranormalitymag.com. So this month's edition is great. It's got Dave Schrader on the front and a nice little interview with him. He's a fantastic podcaster. And also within there is an article about the Battersea Poltergeist, which, of course, made big waves last year thanks to Danny Robbins. Anyway, you wonderful guys, I'd suggest go check it out, paranormalitymag.com. It's a great read. It's free. What more do you want? <laughs> Hooray, it's time for my favourite part of this show, where we get to talk about your true paranormal experiences. And my, to, to channel my inner Jim Harold, my, do we have a doozy for you today. That was awful. Sorry, Jim. Anyway, this one is entitled Personal Paranormal Experiences, PPE, yes. And it's from Grace. Hello, Kevin. Hi. Becca. Hello. And most importantly, the neighbour's cat. I hope you're all doing fantastic. We are, thank you. And have time for a dance break today. Well, I hope we do. Thank you, Grace. I shall um, I shall check with Becca to see if she fancies a little fox trot. We will see. I've been listening to the show for a while now, ever since I heard about it on Real Life Ghost Stories podcast. Ah, oh, well, that's very nice, yeah. And, of course, everyone, it goes without saying, go and check out the pod mother herself, Emma, over on Real Life Ghost Stories, if you want some really good shows. Anyway, where am I? I love the show and listen to it at work whilst grooming demon-possessed dogs and cats. Just kidding, or am I, she says. My name is Gracie and I'm in my 20s and I live in the southeastern part of the US. I have significant Cherokee heritage and my family has a long history of paranormal encounters and experiences. Very interesting. I believe that due to my family history and my personal makeup, i.e. my generalised anxiety and panic disorder, being a major empath and having multiple sensitivities, I was perhaps meant to have paranormal experiences in a way. Very interesting, Gracie. Today I will be sharing with you my most recent experiences from the past couple of years that all took place in my house. And then she says, cue spooky music. Music? Why do I say music like a cow? Music, not music. Anyway, she says, cue spooky music. But we why would you say that, Gracie? We don't do stupid things like that. Oh, wait. Two or three years ago, I was having some trouble going to sleep on Saturday night. My alarm clock hadn't been working well, waking me up earlier or later than it had been set. That night, I was up probably around 2am and had just started to become sleepy. I went into the kitchen and wrote on a sticky note asking my parents to wake me up in time to get ready for church in the morning. I took the sticky note and put it at eye level on their bedroom door so that one of them would definitely see it going back into their room in the morning. I went to bed and tried to get some sleep before my parents woke me up. The next morning, I woke up by myself and looked at the clock. It was already too late to go to church and I found out my parents had already left. I asked my mum why she hadn't woke me up earlier in the day and she told me she didn't see a sticky note on the door. I went to go and show her, and the sticky note was nowhere to be found. I looked on the floor and under furniture, all around the door, and could not find the sticky note. I eventually gave up and forgot about it. A few weeks later, I was helping my mum find her glasses. She thought she dropped her glasses between her side of the bed and the nightstand. So, I lay on the floor and used a small flashlight to investigate the suspected areas. As I looked under the bed with my light, 
I slid a box to my right away from the wall to see if her glasses fell behind the bed. And there was a sticky note. Yes, the same sticky note from weeks ago. Somehow, that note fell from the door on the outside of the room, went into the bedroom, passed the bookshelf on the left, turned left, and moved about 20 feet forward, and put itself behind a box under my parents' bed. I found it very odd, and almost physically impossible, but I ignored it. A week or so later, we found dry oatmeal piled up on a paper plate and spread throughout the kitchen. It could have been a case of sleepwalking, but still notable. Maybe a month or two after this, I started to have an uneasy feeling at night and felt as if someone or something was watching me. Sometimes I had the feeling it was coming from outside my window, but I also felt it coming from my closet. Some time went by and I was gently awoken in the early hours of the morning to the sound of my door opening. Being still very tired, I kept my eyes closed, assuming my mum was coming to get something from my room. I heard the air pressure change as it does when someone walks by my fan, as well as feet shuffling and sliding against the carpet. The noise of feet shuffling made it next to the side of my bed that I sleep on. At this point, I was debating in my mind whether or not to open my eyes and help my mum find whatever she was looking for. Then I heard what sounds like hands sorting through or carefully moving items on my nightstand. I finally decided to turn around and help her. As soon as I looked, it startled me to find that no one was there. Confused, I got up, wide awake now and went outside my room to find my cat wide-eyed staring from the end of the hallway, looking at my doorway, then looking at me, concerned and confused. I walked through the house and no one was awake, which would not have mattered anyway because there is no way I wouldn't have heard them leave my room. Also, the noise of the items moving on the nightstand continued right up until I opened my eyes and looked. This creeped me out quite a bit and it was hard to shake mostly because I know what I experienced, but I couldn't make sense of any of it. Those are kind of mundane in comparison to some of my other experiences, but I will continue to send in others and there will be a part two to this email very soon. Sorry for the long introduction, but I thought I would give my background since I plan to send in many more emails. Thanks so much for reading my real life paranormal stories. With love, from the States, Gracie. Well, Gracie, send in your other things ASAP. And when I say ASAP, I mean a sexual alligator predator. No, I don't. I mean as soon as possible. Pretty please. Um, Wow. What a series of experiences. I mean, I would be absolutely terrified if I thought Becca had come into our bedroom and was fannying about and I opened my eyes and she wasn't there. I think I'd leap out of the third story window and just splatter on the ground. Yeah, because uh, I can't float. But no, that is absolutely terrifying. So yes, please, Gracie, thank you so much for your email. But do send in your other stories as soon as you can, because we all want an update. Now, our next email, we're going to take a bit of a diversion here. Yes, we are. Of course, we always need to talk about ghosts. But what about the Fae folk? Now, on other shows, I'll be perfectly honest. That And maybe rightly so, maybe we'll find out in this email, I'm yet to read it, so maybe we'll find out together. But they're all, any time the fae folk are concerned or discussed, it's very much with a an air of, be very careful what you say, they're going to come out and mess about with your toaster, and stuff like that. So let's see where this email takes us. Hi Kevin, hi, Becca, hi, and the neighbour's kitty cat, meow. Ooh, feisty one today, kitty cat. I wish to remain anonymous if you decide to share my story. I do, and thank you, you will. As the creatures I discuss are not fond of me doing so, I'd imagine. There we go again. I told you, didn't I? I'm not so a lot of people believe in these things, you know. Here we go. I found your podcast about two months ago and I've been binge listening and tuning into them ever since. Why, thank you, Anonymi. I really appreciate that. I genuinely do. I know I do it with stupid voices, but that's just how I live. So uh, I do apologise. I don't apologise. I'm proud of who I am. Hooray! Yay me. Who says that, you weirdo? Anyway. I have a handful of otherworldly experiences myself. There are a few I'll mention that still linger in my memory. The earliest spooky encounter was in 2003. The most recent happening was 2019. Two of my experiences, of which I believe I encountered 
fairies. Yes, really, fairies. I know your podcasts are primarily ghost stories, but the good folk, as they are called, aren't always sparkles and sunshine. If she mentions a broken toaster. Anyway, I mean, it might be a he, you know, might be a them. I don't know. Let's find out. They say you'll see what I mean in the stories I'm about to share. Ooh, so let's go. This is Anonymized Stories. Encounter 1, 2003. This took place in my hometown in Massachusetts. Of course, haunted New England. I was nine years old at the time this took place. My best friend and I were playing hide-and-seek one day in my two-story house. It was my turn to seek. After going room to room looking for my best friend, I had only one room left to look. My mother's room upstairs. I know you're in here, I called out to my friend. I peered over the chair nestled in the corner of the room, and I found her. Gotcha, I said to my friend, and we both giggled. Girls, do you want a snack? My mum yelled from the bottom of the stairs up to us. Yes, we'll be right down, we shouted back. We were walking out of my mum's room when all of a sudden, crash, the glass tabletop of my mum's phone table shattered into a million pieces. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have been playing here. My friend said apologetically to my flustered mum, in brackets, who had heard the loud noise and dashed upstairs to investigate. It's all right, girls, just find a new game to play. I'll get the vacuum, but stay out of my room. I don't want you to step on glass. Better yet, stay out of the room, period, mum replied. My mum had left her bedroom to grab the vacuum. My friend, still embarrassed from what just happened, was continuing to apologise to me until I noticed she went silent and wide-eyed. What's the matter? I said. She responded by silently pointing her finger in the direction of the phone table, There, we both saw hairy arms slash hands toying with the phone cord right by the phone table. The arms and hands were so hairy, they were almost like gorilla arms or something, but it had cuffs, like whatever it was was wearing a suit. We only saw arms, no body or face or legs. We darted downstairs and both reconvened. Did you see that, my friend said. The hairy arms, I replied. Yes, what the hell was that? She spoke low to keep away any attention from my mother. I've no idea. Needless to say, we never went into my mum's room to play again after that. For the longest time, I thought we saw a ghost or a demon. What I believe it was now, after doing some research, is a Pukwudgie. Pukwudgies are troll-like beings, of which are specifically found in Massachusetts, that stand two to three foot tall. They are able to appear and disappear at will and shapeshift into animals. Normally, you're supposed to find them in the woods, but our house was situated on land that included a forest with a marsh if you went far enough in the backyard. Take it for what you will, but the memory still continues to spook me to this day. Encounter 2, 2019 I was now living in Oklahoma and working at a mum and pop shop. The employees up there were all close to each other like family. The owners of the business had recently purchased a vacation home nestled in the Ozark Mountains. A co-worker had mentioned how her recent trip was with my boss, getting things unpacked and settled in for them. Oh, it's so beautiful, you'll love it, she said to me. One thing I will mention, it's magical. Yeah, the area looks lovely, I've been looking at it on Google, I replied. No, not magic in the beauty. I mean old magic, real magic. Oh, like ghosts and witches and stuff. Well, kinda, but what I was specifically referring to is fairies. I caught one on video, dead serious. You're shitting me, I said with a chuckle of disbelief. Fine, have a look if you don't believe me. I thought it was an ember that had sparked off the fire as we had one outside. It glitches the video you can see the wings and the body. We watch the video, and sure enough, the ember flickers and I notice its wings like that of a butterfly flapping. The way it moves is choppy in a way, not a fluid movement. The fairy is hovering over the fire and is brightly golden coloured, like a golden light. All of a sudden, the video glitches and stops. Holy shit, 
I'm not saying that's a fairy, but that looks just like a fairy, I said to her. I was still sceptical, but weird things can happen, who knows. When we visit in October, you'll see what I mean. The veil will be at its thinnest. The forest is magic, she said. Fine, I'll see for myself. It's now the weekend of our trip. We make the drive up to the Ozarks. Talk about living in the boonies. Woods everywhere. It was a beautiful house, though. Nothing off or haunted about it, to my knowledge. In brackets, the backyard would be a different story. I decided to take a morning walk the next day in the wood behind the house, close enough to still barely see the house in view. Leaves, moss, twigs, snail shells, and mushrooms were scattered amongst the forest floor. I'm definitely not in the city anymore, I thought to myself. And then I felt as if I was being watched somehow. Hello, I know you live here. You need not be afraid of me. I thought maybe shouting this out would make my uneasiness of feeling like I was being watched settle. I got my phone out and started to take some nature photos. As I was continuing to do this, I noticed something odd about my surroundings. All of the twigs, all of the leaves, the logs stood straight up on the forest floor. 90 degree angle straight. If there were fairies, this was certainly their work and housing that they'd crafted, I thought to myself. When I got back in the house, I pulled my phone out to browse through the pictures I just took in the woods. I'm scrolling through them, and that's when I notice an image that is totally greened out. Green screen green. The only photo to do that in any of my phones ever brackets side note as a millennial i've owned a fair share of mobile phones look at this i showed my co-worker yep whatever it was didn't want you seeing them do you believe me now she remarked and yes i did update i was looking at the photos last year in an attempt to identify some of the mushrooms i captured on the photos you should have seen my reaction when the mushrooms on the log were identified as fairy caps. I should also mention the day I started my new job in 2021. I got into my car to go to work on the first day. I noticed a bunch of dust particles around my mirror, steering wheel and console. As I went to wipe the dust, I realised it was crawling. Hundreds of baby spiders had hatched in my car. Was it the fairies getting back at me for the time I spent with my co-workers in the Ozarks? Were they giving me difficulty for going to work for someone else? I still haven't figured that one out for sure. I've got some ghostly encounters too and I'll email them when I have the time. Thanks for reading and keep up the good work. Anonymous, am I. What are you doing to me? That's kind of scary. Now, I've just got to chill because I've never really thought about the Fey folk. I mean, me and Becca done a podcast, right? Uh, A Patreon recently where we discussed it and Becca poo-pooed the idea and said she didn't believe it. And someone very quickly got in touch, one of our Patreons, to say, shouldn't say that, maybe you want to leave out some milk and some bread just to appease them. And I said that to Becca and she was like, I'm not doing that. I was like, fair enough, but I'm just saying. And then I reminded her when we went to the Isle of Man and the Isle of Man is like, well, it's an island just off Liverpool, really. Um, Well, they probably wouldn't like me saying that, but it is. It's kind of like it's within the Granada TV region, but you have to get a boat out to it or a plane. Anyway, it's a very small island. It's very old and it's very spooky and spiritual. It's it's a little bit of a magic island in its own right. And we were going to a cat sanctuary and um, which is down the far side of the island. And we had to get a certain bus. And when you get on this certain bus, it's it's like a, a council ran bus. It's not like a special bus or a tourist bus, bus, tourist bus. It's a proper bus. And you know, like when, um, if you come into like the shopping market or whatever, or Green Street, it will say, like a robotic voice will say, Green Street or whatever. There's a part where you go over this bridge called the Fairy Bridge and it comes up Fairy Bridge as you go over it. And the robotic voice says, say hello to the fairies, everyone. And everyone on the bus, oh no, it wasn't. It was say good morning to the fairies, everyone. And everyone on the bus, all the Isle of Man residents, non-tourists, at the same time went, good morning, fairies. And I thought, we're not in Kansas anymore, Becca. We're not in Kansas anymore. But yeah, so, you know, belief in these folk is widespread. And should I be scared? 
Should I be paying them more respect? Should I maybe, I don't know, start leaving God's little miniature cinnamon buns that I can make from my vast collection of cinnamon buns? I don't know. Maybe I should. What do you guys think? Let me know. Send me an email to contact at talkaboutghosts.com. But Anonymi, thank you very much. Please send in your other stories, whether they be about fae or ghosts. Anyway, sticking with ghosts and the paranormal, shall we all take a little trip, pack your bag, pack a pack lunch, and uh, maybe a bottle of water for the journey, for we're all about to head into the corner, which is owned by the old skeptic. She's not old. <laughs> She'll batter me for saying that. Which is owned by the sceptical lady of the house in the darkened, wizened corner known as Becca's Paranormal Reddit Corner. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time for Paranormal Reddit Corner with Becca. Here we are. It's time. Hello. Hello. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You? Yeah, I am. Thank you. Um... What's new in your world? Um, I don't know. Not a huge amount. You're not as busy as you were last week, are you? Because uh, your event's been and gone. Yeah. Was it successful? It was successful, thank you. Are yeah. you happy with all the work you put in? Yes. Everyone was pleased with the results. The outcome was good. Everyone was happy. It went very well. Um, yeah, yeah. Very pleased. Where would you rate your your, your performance on an A, B, A being good, great in fact, down to a Z, which is awful. God, sucker. Oh, I smashed it. Did you? Yeah, A plus? Yeah, yeah, I smashed it. I okay. Smashed oh, well it. done you. Well done you. So, we're, of course, we're within your paranormal Reddit corner here, mm-hmm. um, we like to just give a little brief, whilst we get Becca on, we do like to give a little brief update on the neighbour's cat. Because um, this week, she's been very brave, mm-hmm. and she's had to go and have her yearly vaccination, hasn't she? She did. And you went in with her, because I said, if I go in with her, there's a good chance... They'll phone the police because they'll go towards her with a needle, and I'll throw something at someone, and yeah. Be if she with. makes any kind of upset noise, you're just going to batter someone. I mean, just to clarify, the neighbour was working. Exactly, that's what I was trying to pick up on. Yeah, I realised then. Um, <laughs> the neighbour was at work and couldn't take her, and it's very important she went, so we agreed to go. Correct. Your voice is a bit low. I was just saying. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Um, so yeah, she's been very good. So we've got a few treats, haven't we, and yeah. things, and and made sure that. We don't shout at her when she rips up this carpet on the stairs. Um, um, oh, she was scared though, wasn't she? She was shaking. Then no, can't I? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't nice. It wasn't. Put on. Speak up. You're back here. Oh, she was scared though, wasn't she? I said she was scared and she was shaking. So you told me, shaking. which broke me heart. Yeah, I know. It was. It was very upsetting. But she was. Uh, she didn't flinch actually at all at the needle itself though. She was very, really really brave at that. Because she's hard. She's hard. Scouse, isn't she? Um, but she's well. She's the, a healthy weight. Yeah. The vet checked her teeth and her eyes, and everything's okay. Yeah, and then he tried to convince her to buy her some toothpaste, didn't he? And like, so just put yeah. this on a paw. She'll lick it off, and the teeth will be fine. It's like I'm not. If she won't, like, I don't like doing anything that she's not going to like. I know. We might have to think about this though. Yeah, we might like, have to end up getting it because I don't want her to have teeth problems. Yeah, but at the same time, if like when I was a kid, if my mum walked up and spilled some McCall's or whatever on my hand, McCall's. I don't know, Colgate on my hand and left me alone. And I was like, the fuck's this? Let's lick it off. When she come at me with the toothpaste, I'd be like, no, leave, what are you, are you doing? She might, uh, I'm sure they make it so that you like the flavour. And I'm sure cats think exactly the same way as I. Mm-hmm. Anyway, none of this is paranormal, so let's get to it. Becca, yeah. welcome us to your corner, please. I will when I'm ready. Oh, okay. You're reading that. Yeah, okay, thank you. Welcome to Reddit Corner with Becca. Dead low, you know. Speak I up. wasn't. I wasn't. You said even, you could project your voice. You couldn't project a film. A, Come on, prove well, me wrong. I couldn't project a film. I am not a projector. Welcome to Reddit Corner with Becca. She's woken up. <laughs> you get out. You're just being rude now. Get out. There you go. This story is titled "There Used to Be a Spirit or Entity in My Home, But We Got Rid of It, But Now It Came Back." Lengthy title. Does this happen a lot? Is that the full title? That's the full Bloody title. Bloody hell! Okay, go for it. Let's begin. So this might be a little out of order, so my apologies in advance. When I was about three years old, I would see streamy, wispy purple things at about my ankle level. I was also terrified to go anywhere in the house alone, so I made my mum go with me everywhere. I talked with my mum about this tonight, and she said that before I was born, when she moved into the house, she would hear a banging noise coming from the wall, usually in threes. She would hear the doorbell ring at two in the morning and check, and nobody would be there. She would also see shadow figures and feel like something was watching her or touching her. Eventually, she came to the conclusion that there was something in our house 
and when I was about seven, she used sage to get rid of it. It seemed to work for quite a while, but now I feel like it's back. My brother is telling me he hears noises when he's trying to sleep that keep him awake at night. I also now see orbs all the time and occasionally shadow figures. Cabinets open randomly and things get moved without anyone moving them. We have a dog now and sometimes he will stare at the wall and bark for no reason. I also sometimes get a chill up my spine randomly. I think it might be back. The only thing I question is why it's manifesting in different ways than before, like orbs and moving stuff and opening stuff and the shivers I get. Could this be something new, or could it be the thing my mum got rid of and it came back? Interesting. Has he had any any suggestions? We do like to see if anyone's given advice. Uh, yes, first comment says, well, first off, the knocking in threes is mocking the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We all know that one. So it's mocking God, basically. That plus cabinets and objects moving with the shadow figures, to me at least, says poltergeist or demon. It's a stuff oh, oh, that's a bit of a fucking jump. But anyway, go on. So stuff happening again might be the same ones. That's not to scare you or to say you should move away or anything, or that it's the only spirit there. It could be two or more if you see multiple orbs at once. Some might just be hanging out and one more of the mocking god type. What? I'm losing track now. I say that because that's what's happened for me growing up, but we're also sensitive to spiritual stuff and ghosts and they come to us. But for 14 years we lived with a spirit that was just there and was actually polite. No, don't believe that. Okay, that's interesting though. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I think it is? Well, tell me, Becca, what do you think it is? It's your corner. What do you think's going on there? Um... I think this person is desperate to believe they live with the paranormal. Oh, interesting. Schaden, not Schadenfreude. Um, what's the other Germanish word? Uh, where they want the attention so they make out they've got uh, an affliction. Munchausen? Munchausen, it? yeah. Okay, go on anyway. Um, yeah, like, okay, so when they said, oh, eventually, like, so this happened when I was three, and then when they were seven, like, my mum finally decided to do something about it. When it was, that thing was sage. Like, sage is such an easy fix. I thought they were going to say, like, oh, when we, so when we were seven, we moved, or whatever. Yeah. But sage is such an easy fix. Why would that have taken four years? Mm, there's a good point. Like, Maybe it took four years to convince it? his mum. I'm, no, I'm fairly sure he said my mum heard noises and okay. the knocking and thing. Yeah, they said the door went and did it. Um, so that seems like a long time. Um, I like seeing orbs all the time. Like, Yeah, get your eyes tested, you? I think. Do you? But also, like, I think personally it could be, if you're looking at it from it's a true thing and it's a believable thing, which, I don't know, but maybe it's his maturity, so maybe it's, the, there's the old trope of puberty, etc., affecting how you interact with the paranormal. Good so point. Maybe, maybe that's why it's back, Maybe yeah. it's not changed. He has. Changed. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, when he's gone from, like, being a toddler and, like, yeah, you know, thinking you see the little yeah, things. Yeah, and seeing little wisps. And then growing up, and then, yeah, going through... Puberty, puberty, as you say, and... Feeding off the energy. That's all it could be. It could have went away with the sage and come back with his pubic. Maybe. With his pubic hair. Can. <laughs> well, he would be growing some, wouldn't he, if he's going through it? Stop it. I'm just saying. It's not rude. It's nature. It's none of your business what he's growing. I should have comment and say, to you, sir, how bushy are you in the nether regions? Um, Probably not. No, because then I'd be arrested. They'd be like, no, no, I'm not trying to groom someone. <laughs> I know, yeah. I'm, it's a paranormal <laughs> investigation, officer. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Your Honour. Your Honour, yeah. Okay, well, thank you once again, Becca, for allowing us in to your Paranormal Corner. You're welcome. Have you got uh, anything that you wish to add or anything you want to plug? <laughs> I love that. Have you, oh, have you, have you wrote, wrote a book or something? I'm saying normally when people do interviews, they say at the end, have you got anything you want to plug before you go? You oh, yeah. want to like, mention the show you, you oh, do? I find that so amusing. Well, have, you got some, have, you, have you? Have you been running a side hustle where you, you've got you doing t-shirts or well, something? No, it's something people don't already know about you, but you know damn well I've written a book. What? Yeah, but that's the book for the show from yeah, years exactly. ago. But Dude. if you've had any new listeners, they might not know about it. This sounds like it's planned and it's dead cringy. <laughs> have you had any listeners? No, we, well, go have, on, you, no. have you had no new listeners in the well, two I years don't know. since the book I was published? You know what? I don't know, but go on. Yeah. But you don't know. You must have had new listeners. It doesn't tell me if they're new. It just says, like, it might be people... Well, like, if it's gone up, they're new, aren't they? Well, not necessarily. It might have been someone who does me fucking head in. And then they've had a bang on the head and they're like, no, I like them now. But that would be the same numbers, wouldn't it? That would mean the numbers. No, because they'd go gone away in the midtime. Anyway, go on then. Tell us. Tell us. No, plug I, your book. No, I just, I just don't like the fact that you found it so amusing that I might have something <laughs> to plug. Like it. so hilarious, I might possibly have my own thing. No, no, no go on then. Tell us about All your right, book. Right, well, we wrote a book. I wrote a book. Oh, good. And, and can they find that anyway? Yeah. <laughs> 
Is that the name of it? I wrote a book by Rebecca West. <laughs> um, no. So we did a collection of listener stories. Yeah, we? we did, yeah. We did. Yeah. It's called We Need to Talk About Ghosts, Volume 1, because the plan was always that there will be at some point a Volume 2, which with this attitude there might not be. I don't think there will, because you you, you had the time because you were unemployed and you're a furlough, mm. and it was a lot of work when I actually do an early edit and stuff. a lot of work, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Um, okay. So, yeah, there you go. Becca's book's <laughs> available. <laughs> I didn't say anything in your own life. (laughs) (laughs) No, I meant. Becca, I meant just. Smug laughter. No, no. Such a dick. I meant just as fucking any interview you listen to, and at the end they go, and if you get anything you want to. And normally they're on for an interview because they're doing something like that. They're not, you're just part of the show. I meant how I ended it sounded like I was going to ask that, that's all. (laughs) Not as in like, because you've got nothing going on. (laughs) You've got plenty going on. You've got, hey, you, you smashed something out of the park last week, by all accounts. Thanks. Not paranormal or interesting, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> interesting to some, to actually. To some, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, thank you. You're welcome. For allowing us in your corner. Um, we'll be sure to be more polite next time. <laughs> you better be. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Becca. Thank you for joining Reddit Corner with Becca. Well done. She remembered it. 